And our first story, tension is mounting in the Yoyo Nasani district in the northeast region following the refusal of some youth to allow the National Identification Authority to commence the Ghana card distribution exercise in the area. The youth are protesting the NIA's recruitment of non-indigent staff to lead the exercise in the area. The protest has led to the indefinite suspension of the exercise as the angry youth insist the district lead officer and his two deputies will not be allowed to lead the exercise and must be replaced with natives of the district. The police have taken over the equipment for the exercise and other properties of the NIA as the Regional Security Council intervenes in the matter. The, the agitation youth spoke to correspondent Elias Utanko from the district capital. We will like to make our stance clear. Yes. Our stance known to management of NIA mm -hmm. and those in authority that we shall not accept any DL, DTL from any district apart from our own because we also have the men who are more than qualified and have the requisite experience and applied for the position. Yes! 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 yes. yes. On this note, the leadership of UNIO Youth Parliament appealed to the minds of NIA management and bring a, to bring a person from our district who understands the dynamics, languages, and culture of the people if not we still not cooperate and work with anybody in the, in the country. You say no to foreigners. The purported persons posted on NIA team lead to Union National District had a, had a tainted image and an irresponsible lifestyle towards the applicants and registration officials during the NIA mass registration. So we, the youth, we, the youth of Union National District, will not give him space and peace of mind to to operate and we will chase him out anytime yes. we see him in our district yes yes we are telling the national identification officer uh, 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 office that they should try their best and change the guy for us we don't want him here today and we don't want him here tomorrow or else we will not accept anybody from any district to come and work here. But we are saying that no one, no one will come here and work if not our own brother. brother. We are not accepting anyone, whether the deputy or the man or whoever is coming from this place. We are accepting the person, no matter the tribe or where the, uh, the person the person comes from. But we want the person to come from Uyo, Naswan district. We are into what? Serious crisis. We are not going to take it into our own hands, the law into our own hands. We are dealing with peaceful demonstration. But after this, the next step will be taken on if care is not taken. So we are saying that the leadership should take a full step on it. Away from that story, minority members of parliament have boycotted the veteran of Tishman South MP Martin J. Mensah Corsa for the position of deputy minister designate for local government. None of the 30 minority MPs on the committee are present at his vetting. The minority say they are boycotting his vetting over the violence that characterized the 2020 elections in his constituency. We will be joined by my colleague Joseph Opokugakpo shortly, but in the meantime, Member of Parliament for Ukiapim South, Obi Amwa, has described as far-fetched the minority in Parliament's justification for the decision to boycott the vetting of Martin Ejimi Zakosa as Deputy Local Government Minister. The minority say the decision is to stay away from the process to protest the violence that characterized the 2020 elections in his constituency and lack of progress on the investigations. But Obi Amwa says the Deputy Minister-designate cannot be blamed. Uh, this is we'll bring you that update later in the bulletin. But DCE for KJB in the OT region, Max Siedu, and a number of officers from the Forestry Commission have urged schools to sustain the initiative so that funds put in the project would benefit the society. So significant in the sense that uh, 
it is going back to green Ghana. You know, if the last tree dies, the, man, the last man also dies. And so, for us to survive, we have to continue planting trees. That is why we are planting trees. Besides that, Ghana has also lost much of its forest. And for matter, we have to bring it back. And so planting trees now means that we have to bring the forest back. And so 11th of June has been set aside for this now, some teachers and students who took part in the tree planting exercise have been speaking to Joy News. So that, uh, you see, as a farmer, as you said, if we, we, we notice, we realize that the rainfall pattern has not been very good. It, it is changing. It's changing. Uh -huh. Living this year, I think we, we recently we've had the, 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 the only one rain that is so heavy. Uh -huh. And that affects our work. Last year, our maize farms did not do well because of lack of rain. And so we have been expecting rains. And so this exercise is so important. Uh, and so like the president uh, is doing, I think it's a laudable idea. We should support it. We should go and plant trees and we should protect the trees. Uh, Notwithstanding uh, this chainsaw and uh, chainsaw operators, and sawmills. Uh, in fact, the sawmills are doing more harm to our forests uh, than even the chainsaw operators. So they can also be checked. Otherwise, even what we are doing in the near future, they will still destroy it. And so we should have good laws to protect our forests. Then we can also live and live well. We need the trees to survive. Thank you very much. Oh, I just want to say this program is a very laudable one. Life of a man depends on trees. And as we plant these trees, the most important thing for us is to, to protect them. We thank the government for this initiative and we thank the Forestry Commission for supporting this school for this exercise. Thank you. Now, the officials from the Forestry Commission also visited the Asoto community, where the community has made available two and a half acres of land for the initial planting of 200 assorted tree species. Peter Senu is monitoring the exercise in the Oti region and joins us live with the latest. Peter, tell us about the response of the public, especially the students. I have seen here in the Oti region, uh, the public is very enthusiastic about the, what is going on today, the Green Ghana project. And moving from Jashikan district to the KGB district, uh, you would see people helping the Forestry Commission Along the road, individuals have taken assorted uh, three species for their farms and other free spaces in the environment to plant. And so it's been an enthusiastic uh, project, if you ask me, here in the OT region. The mm. Forestry Commission officials have also been on the ground. The DCs for the two districts have also been on the ground, and they have been providing the moral support, uh, so to speak, to today's um, exercise. In fact, right now I have the district... Um, manager for the Forestry Commission, who superintends over the Jessica and then the KJB Forest District. We just want to briefly to pick his thought about the exercise. And so, uh, uh, Manager James, uh, how do you see today's uh, exercise, briefly for us? The exercise has been very successful, going around us, so everybody visit planting. Coming into KJB uh, Secondary School, a lot has been done. What I've seen, have, I'm very, very impressed. They have done mm. nice pegging. They have gone ahead to do the planting. They actually came for 2,421 trees. And as of now, they've almost missed planting everything. And uh, we expect that uh, this will contribute significantly to the environment of the school. Mm. Fifi, let me ask you quickly. Uh, you know, other individuals are also supposed to pick the three seedlings, but the fear I picked on the ground is that 
Uh, they fear that when the trees are mature, a uh, forestry commission will take over from them. But I uh, interacting with him, he said that is not it. But once he's here, we want to pick his spot quickly. Uh, what, what do you say to that? Are the uh, fears genuine? No, the fears are not genuine. Maybe the understanding is not uh, well out there. Because the government is looking at the larger picture, where the 5 million trees we are planted today will contribute to solving a larger environmental problem. As to the direct benefits, as in trees, timber, or whatever comes out of the planting today we are doing belongs solely to the individual. We are looking at a situation where we will increase the vegetation cover that will be able to contribute to uh, absorbing uh, excess carbon dioxide to contribute to solving climate change problems. That's okay. the larger picture. Right, so if that's the manager, James Wooney, who superintends over the KGB and then Jessica and the Forest District. So once again, it's been an enthusiastic uh, project, uh, Green Ghana, exercise where we are supposed to uh, plant 5 million trees in a day. And so it's so far so good here uh, in the hotel region, 50. Well, it's Daniel, Peter, but thank you very much for joining us. Daniel Jima is on standby from the Ashanti region where Otunfo Osetutu II has planted a tree um, as part at the Royal Gold Club in Kumasi in commemoration of Green Ghana Day. This is to commence the planting of a million trees in the Ashanti region alone. This is part of government's efforts to restore depleting vegetative cover of the country and separate efforts including the Otunfo Landscape Restoration Project are already rolled out to plant 3 million trees in the region. Nanao Jima has joined us. Nanao, describe the event for us, the planting of the tree. So it was a special one with um, burial dignitaries across the Ashanti region coming in to greet the regional um, occasion, okay, regional event. It actually started at the Royal Golf Club in Kumasi with the Ashanti here in attendance and also Ashanti Regional Minister Simon Osemensa and other dignitaries all um, honoring the event. Ashanti here was the first to um, plant a tree and the advice for the public was that whoever um, it has faith in his environment to ensure that at least a tree is planted so that a Santi region will be able to meet the target of a million trees. Already the Forestry Commission has distributed 1.2 million seedlings to be planted across uh, the, the region. And this shows that the, the um, location or the tree planting project has been oversubscribed. And from there, the, some of the dignitaries moved to help the Kumasi Metropolitan Assembly commence their own um, campaign and by uh, planting some trees at the experimental basis school and also um, somewhere around the cultural center, a place they call the European Park. So um, the event for the um, Ashanti region continues with various NGOs, churches, and other um, individuals also planting trees in their various areas. What um, we, we are learning is that now the, the main issue has been with the uh, nurturing of these trees. And right. According to the uh, Deputy Minister for Designates for Land and Natural Resources, Forestry Commission and also um, uh, other NGOs have taken it upon themselves to help nurture these trees. And mm. also, um, he's also, they are also calling on individuals uh, to ensure that every tree planted within their locality are, are nurtured and also um, the, 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 the necessary measures are put in place to ensure that they live, they go and live up to the purpose for which they were planted. Uh, not long ago, and the information is that the KMA will officially bring um, the event to an end, but this uh, tree planting exercise is supposed to continue within various homes and areas. Nana Aljima, thank you very much for bringing us those updates from the Ashanti region. Let's come back to Parliament. Uh, Joseph Opokogako is standing by. Joe, before we get the updates on the boycott, how has the House been marking the tree planting exercise? So there's been tree planting activities here in Parliament as well. In fact, Parliament is not sitting today at all. All members of parliament have been granted a leave of assault for them to then travel to their constituencies to go lead tree planting exercises right in their constituencies. But uh, within the presence of parliament, Speaker um, Alban Bagben, as well as First Deputy Speaker Joe Seusu and Second Deputy Speaker, um, who is also the MP for Formina, have all been planting trees 
right here within the presence of parliament as well as the clerk of parliament himself, Cyril Ansa, and a number of other key leaders. And it's been a ceremony here at which Speaker Alban Bagwin has been indicating that the planting of the trees should not end the process, but there should be very conscious effort to nurture these trees so that then they can grow into bigger trees that will then eventually benefit the entire environment. Daniel. Mm. Right, right. Uh, that's a very laudable move by the Speaker of Parliament. But let's come back to the boycott. Um, tell us about how the minority MPs of Parliament have not been at Martin E.J. Mesa Corsa's vetting. So, funny enough, that vetting started just a few minutes after 10 a.m. this morning. None of the minority MPs, in fact, there are 13 NDC MPs on that committee. None of them was present. The vetting then began with um, a lot of the majority MPs then asking the necessary questions. The minority MPs give a number of reasons for which they say they don't want to be part of the vetting process. First of all, they say that Mr. J. Mensakosa used violence to deny them a majority in parliament. Uh, using his uh, seat in the Techiman South area and how he conducted himself ahead of the polls. They also make the point that um, the killings there is something that they would want to protest. There were about two deaths in the Techiman South area during the election and they say they would want to send a message to the international community that the inaction of the police in terms of bringing the alleged perpetrators to book is something that is very much out of place. And again, the minority mm. MPs say they would want to send a clear message that um, someone who benefited from violence in coming to parliament shouldn't be rewarded mm. with even more positions, including a deputy ministerial position, which is how come they boycotted his vetting. And the indication we're getting is that they will take this to even longer lengths in the sense that when it comes to approval on the floor of parliament itself, it's very likely that the minority will vote against it. They will demand secret voting and they would seek to actually pull bricks on the process to get him approved. Um, there's been responses to that from those on the majority side. I've been speaking to Obi Amwa, who is Deputy Minister Designate for Local Government himself, as well just as Mr. J. Mensakosa, and he's also a member of the vetting committee. And he makes the point that he thinks the reasons being given by the minority are far-fetched and very much unjustifiable, and that they on the MPP side will use their numbers and seek to get Mr. J. Mensakosa approved, even when the processes come to the plenary itself. Now, Joseph, um, the process itself of the vetting, I can imagine it wasn't as um, lively as a vetting with the likes of Harun Edrisu, Mohammed Mutaka Mubarak, and Mahama Yaraga present would be. You are right, Daniel. There was a lot of um, uh, questions that usually you would say are the kind of uh, praise singing questions that would come up during the vetting because then, of course, they are all on the same side, speaking of the MPP MPs and Mr. J. Mensakosa. But very fundamentally, a very interesting question that came up at the beginning of the entire vetting from one of the MPP MPs, John Kuma, was what Mr. J. Mensakosa had done about the deaths that happened in his constituency during the election because it's one of the reasons that the minority MPs gave and they had insisted that uh, the defense minister, the interior minister, none of them have actually visited the family of the victims and even those who were shot and didn't pass on because um, they are not exactly sensitive about what happened. And uh, Mr. J. Mensakosa responded to that even at the beginning of the session and said that uh, even one of those who died um, a gentleman called Abdul, his family, as in the mother and the father, are present in the vetting room because he's since gone to virtually commiserate with the family and provided the necessary support to help them get back on their feet. And I've actually been interacting with the family of this said gentleman who is one of those who died. And the family make the point that the, the gentleman who was killed is actually a nephew of Mr. J. Mensakosa. And as a family, they've managed to resolve matters and they're counting on Mr. J. Mensakosa to then go ahead and seek the necessary justice for them. So did the family fully support him being vetted for this particular uh, position? That was kind of the very um, controversial question that came up. And then all the others were very usual questions. And the vetting itself lasted for just a little over 30 minutes. Joseph Opoku Gakpo, thank you very much for those updates from Parliament.
Let's come back to tree planting and the multimedia group has partnered with the Labati Beach Hotel to join the rest of the country in planting trees on Green Ghana Day. Government had announced an ambitious plan to plant 5 million trees today in a bid to reclaim the country's green landscape. Already, Ghana has lost about 80% of its vegetation, but today's exercise is aimed at reversing this worrying trend. Listen to Managing Director of Labadi Beach Hotel, Rene Vincent Ernst, speaking after planting the trees and head of programs at Joy FM, Ed of Night Tay. Of the seedlings already planted and more are going to follow just for the purposes of uh, this particular interaction we're doing two um, just to show the viewers what we are doing uh, today uh, it's a tall order but it's very doable we are extremely proud to join you guys and the multimedia group in this very 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 important uh, 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 track it's important for our green policy something we believe in very much as we you do as well therefore we have to secure this world for our children mm -hmm. and this is one of the good ways of doing it and so it does doesn't take much of, of, a, of a brain cell to know that you have to be part of something like this and we are very very staunch believer in that and, and somebody will be asking that why why the multimedia why the joy brands particularly um, why choose us uh, there's no doubt that the partnership that we have with you guys is is uh, absolutely nationwide it's something that people like it's people know you guys they know us and they see that that particular partnership will work very very well you know we are promoting everything together whether it's our staycations whether it's everything that we have to do at La Bidi Beach here we always look at the glass is half full rather than half empty and the way that the times are today we think that's extremely exciting to be shouting from the rooftops with people like your good selves or what the good things people can expect from the body beach hotel and these are part of those things it's part of our, our uh, role in community to be part of stuff like that and definitely we're leaving this in your care as stewards of these uh, you know seedlings uh, we hope that in a year or two when we come back we'll still see them alive and do even better you you will be the we will be the first recipient of a coconut i promise you that's <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely it will be. They, we, we have more than 400 coconut trees in the Bidi Beach Hotel. It's very important to us. The green environment, our green policies, as I mentioned before, and to shout with you guys as partners, multimedia group, it's, it's a, it's a no-brainer. It's a straightforward relationship which we are very proud of and something that we will want to continue for always. And if we can do something like this together, you know, there is no stopping us, is there? Definitely. Rene uh, Vincent and he's managing um, director of Bidi Beach Hotel. Let me now speak to Adam Knight. She's programs manager, um, Joy FM. And so, Adam, you could just uh, join me. Uh, I, I'm really upbeat about this entire exercise. Um, we're planting this. It's well, maybe symbolic, but it speaks to even more in terms of what we believe in at the multimedia group. Yes, definitely. And um, you know, we set the national agenda quite often and we champion this. So when the, the president called on all Ghanaians that we need to embark on this exercise, definitely we just have to embrace it because we believe in it. He actually did mention that our, our very existence is tied to this. We all just can't sit back and watch our you know, environment just get wiped out because they're felling trees, galamse here and there and all that. So it's a call from the president. We believe in it and we are supporting it as a group and definitely this is a question i asked um renee that really after this what next are we going to see it you know <laughs> oh definitely <laughs> you know we have a long-standing partnership with the labadi beach hotel they are uh, our strong partners they support our activities so um we decided to do this together because he realized that they also believe in a lot of greenery you come around here the buildings are beautiful but you still have a very green and a very beautiful environment so why not we are going to nurture it watch it make it grow every once in a while we will come i heard you say that you have left it in their care <laughs> But we are go we're jointly going to nurture it and ensure that it grows to fulfill the purpose for which we are doing this today. Now, still on this story, members of the Diplomatic Corps and other dignitaries joined the exercise at the Forestry Commission here in Accra. Diana Akonsia is head of the EU delegation in Ghana. European Union's main objective for the next years is to fight against climate change and to become a climate neutral continent. So we are very happy that Ghana has decided to join. European Union will support. We have already in the last three years planted 300,000 uh, trees uh, uh, in different part of, parts of Ghana with our uh, um, environmental projects. Mm. So we will continue to do this in the future and we welcome very much that the government of Ghana is doing this. 
Now, the Green Ghana Day, which forms part of a larger Green Ghana project, has received support from organizations, individuals, and churches. Dr. Joyce Ai is one of them. I'd like to mention that what we're doing to here today is not just a government initiative. It is an individual responsibility for us cover. So the of government is only helping us to play our part. Because the excitement of planting today should not end today. Everyone who plants must be interested in how the tree is doing. And so each one of us, and I'm, I'm glad that we're diplomatic call, we are to assign people from their embassies to coordinate with Forestry Commission to watch how the trees are doing. Because I know they would not like in three months' time to be told that the trees that they planted have died. Mm. I know they wouldn't like that. Mm. Especially the lady from uh, yeah. uh, European Union and the Dean. Mm. And that is why we need a coordination. So we're going to request them to assign somebody from the embassy who will work directly with Forestry Commission and be part of the monitoring and evaluation. Meanwhile, a private developer has uprooted 65 coconut trees planted by some media practitioners in Kumasi to make way for construction projects. The trees were planted to protect wetlands in Kumasi and its environs. This includes the banks of the Subin River at Denyame, an area prone to flooding anytime it rains heavily. Unfortunately, these trees did live, did not live to see the light of day. Join News' Mahmoud Mohammed Nuruddin finds out why the trees were destroyed at a time the country has committed to take climate action about unrestrained cutting of trees that once served as wind break in the once beautiful garden city of the country. The journalists, most of whom are environmental activists, were only vigilant about the environmental devastation. They just wanted to make a difference and help in greening the city of Kumasi. In total, 75 coconut trees were planted in a one-day exercise with plans to extend the project to other areas. The Ghana Journalist Association led by its regional chair, Kinsley Hope, and other senior members chose coconut trees because of its diverse benefits. One such is its ability to provide shade, fruits, and income. The location for the plantation was ideal because coconut trees need at least one inch of water per Watering. The discussion we came in, they made us to understand that the site was a buffer zone. And my little understanding of buffer zone, we agreed and because we know that it will be protected from high human impact, negative high human impact. And so we wholeheartedly you know, accepted to do the plantation project there. If I not be KMA giving us, you know, DJ has not the power to just uh, pick up itself and choose a place and then do this. It's a national project because we wanted the place to be a coconut groove in the name of Ghana Journalists Association as our contribution to the fight against uh, climate change and then greening the Kumasi and looking at the uh, location. Two years on, the journalists would have expected their trees to grow beautifully. But that is not the case. Structures are being constructed on the land known as wetland because of its high level of saturation. Assuming these coconut trees were alive, they would have provided what only nature can give, oxygen and fruits. But it is just what it is. We are not a serious country, we are not a serious people because we know how important tree is to life, tree is to health, tree is to everything. So if somebody can just go and cut it off, we have regional security council here and even where the tree was planted, it's right within a security zone area. Because You're live on Join News today with me, Daniel Daza. Stay tuned for business coming up next with Daryl Kwao.
Hi, good afternoon. Welcome to Business. My name is Daryl Kwao. Talo Oil says it has begun formal engagements with government over plans to approve importation of liquefied natural gas, LNG, which could affect its operations in Ghana. Government is currently in the process of approving importation of the product for use by the state for power production and other commercial purposes. Visiting Group Chief Executive of Talo, Rahul Dio, tells Joy Business he's encouraged by meetings so far with the President and other stakeholders. It, we, as I said, we were thinking mostly oil. So we have a commitment to supply 200 billion cubic feet, and I'll explain the numbers in context uh, to the nation, of which about three quarters has been supplied. Right? So what happens today on an average day is we are exporting, we're supplying to Ghana Gas and GNPC about 135 million cubic feet of gas. Okay? And that's for free. So that's the cheapest gas in the country. Uh, and it helps bring the average cost of gas down. That's roughly 40% of the domestic gas supply today. What we've explained to our stakeholders, policymakers, is the scale of the resource. And we have now submitted to GNPC a 10-year gas supply contract for another 500 billion cubic feet. So that's twice, no, two and a half times the size of the current gas supply agreement, right? And our view is that we want to educate the policymakers, uh, help people understand how much, what the scale of the gas resource is, which is within the country. This is, this is Ghana's gas, right? And, you know, my view is that uh, policymakers, once they understand the scale of that, it'll help them then think about what is a much more optimized supply demand picture uh, for the for the country. In other news, some traditional leaders in mining communities have proposed the institution of a reclamation bond in the small-scale mining sector. They believe such conditions will help reduce the impact of mining on the livelihood of communities. The traditional leaders spoke at a workshop on securing food and ecosystem services in mining plague regions of Ghana. Nanai Ojima has more in the following report. Large-scale mining companies, as part of conditions of mining, are expected to reclaim their mined concession. This is strongly regulated by government, forcing some of the mines to adopt concurrent means of reclamation. Communities affected by illegal mining want such conditions extended to small-scale miners. Nana Kwabnapia a chief at the Amansia West District highlighted such concern at a consultative meeting in the district. Both large and small, you know, and the same. What that remark? New measures must be put in place to ensure miners do so responsibly. And it must be ensured that they adhere to it strictly. Reclamation must be key and traditional authority should have a role to play in regulating miners. The Asante Achim Central, Amansia West and Equiapim South districts have communities heavily affected by illegal mining. These communities are targeted under a four-year project sponsored by the Norwegian Agency for Development Cooperation. The project, dubbed Securing Food and Ecosystem Services in Mining Plague Regions of Ghana, is implemented by Tropimbos Ghana. As part of the project, some heavily mined areas at Yaokum in the Amansia West District have been reclaimed with four different tree species. Project manager at Tropimbos, Kwame Apia Ousu, says the reclaimed land will be fertile for food cultivation in a few years. The most important thing is that you know in mining areas there are a lot of uh, chemicals including mercury and other heavy metals that already have polluted the land. And for this land to be used again, you need to get the heavy metals out of the, out of the, uh, of the site. And one of our reasons for doing this is for the trees to be able to take up the heavy metal so that in about 10 to 15 years, this site can be used for agriculture because that is our objective, to be able to secure food production in these areas. And for us to be able to secure the food production, we need to bring the soil back to productivity without heavy metal contamination. The consultation is focused on bringing together 
all players in the mining industry to discuss responsible mining. Reporting for Joy News, Nana Ojima, Kumasi. More business news on our website, myjoyonline.com, including World Bank approving $200 million Ghana COVID-19 emergency preparedness and response project. And there's more coming up on the marketplace at the top of the hour. Up next, sports with Muftao. Hello everyone, time now for sports on Join News today. I am Muftao Nabila Ablai, the chairman of the Africa Union Technical Committee for the Organization of Africa Games. Stalin Mutoya says, Ghana have what it takes to organize the 13th edition of the Africa Games to be staged in the country. After assessing the country's facilities and personnel, Mr. Mutoya said, though the country is behind shadow, there is commitment from the country to host the 53 other African countries that will be assembling in Ghana. Does Ghana have the games village where we can place our athletes? Because there is no games if we don't have athletes. And in the games village, let me start with the facilities. We're looking at accessibility. We're looking at adequacy in terms of number and terms of uh, sport codes. All these are the elements we're looking at. Games Village, we're also looking at the numbers. Are we able to house the number of athletes that we would need for the games? Are we able to provide the amenities that give them comfort as Africa to realize that they are welcome in Ghana? And are we able to deliver the conveniences that will be required in the Games Village? Honorable Minister, in a nutshell, these are the phases that we will be addressing as we go. And I'm happy the media is here so that as we continue to interface, as you interface with the LOC, you focus your attention on the phases that we are in. And we are very much alive that we have lost time, not because of anyone's uh, uh, wish, but God decided to ensure that the whole world comes to a standstill because of COVID-19. But that does not mean we throw our hands in the air. We have ways of making sure that we quicken our steps. And that is what the men and women that you see here are willing and able to do. So, Honorable Minister, we are very happy with that mission that we've had. For the Minister of Youth and Sports, Mustafa Osif, the country will organize the best ever games in its history. Ghana has played a host to the Af African Union Technical Committee for the African Games, and they are here in Ghana to first conduct orientation workshop. I am, I am reliably informed that the workshop was very successful and a very high quality, and the local organizing members have immensely benefited from the expertise of the technical committee, and it is my hope that there will be more of such workshop in the future. The second reason why the AU Technical Committee for the African Games are in Ghana is to assess our preparedness to host the games. And you may, be, you may all witness that the President, of his ex, the President of the Republic of Ghana, His Excellency Nana Adodanko Ekufuado, has demonstrated that Ghana is willing and ready to host the African Games come 2023. I, I led the delegation and we paid a courtesy call on His Excellency, and he gave his commitment to host the best ever African Games in the history of Africa. Amen. I have no doubt at all in my mind that with your collaboration, Mr. Chairman, Ghana will organize the best Africa uh, Games Now, music producer and director Pascal Amanfo speaking to Ben Bako Ibrahim a week ago revealed that the closing of cinemas has caused a decline in investment in the movie industry. According to him, investors are no longer putting in money for movies in Ghana because there are no returns since the closure of cinemas after the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic in Ghana March last year. Well, colleague Peter Sedofia is one of the, is of the same view, and he believes the cinema is a primary source of income. And with the cinemas closed, one cannot go to investors to pitch for funding for their movies. Because when you're going to meet an investor, he asks you, "What are your distribution plans? Okay, mm -hmm. what are your uh, 
recruitment watershed. So how are you going to make the money back? And I keep saying that the cinema is the primary source of revenue for any filmmaker. Yeah. Unless, of course, Amazon or Netflix has contacted you and saying they are giving you twice your investment. That is a different conversation. Yeah. But whereas majority of their films they acquire are not originals, and you have to go to the cinema, make some money, then you move to the next distribution uh, avenue, and move to the next. Cinema is your primary. Yeah. And so if the cinemas are closed, and you go to the investor and he asks you how are you going to make the money back, and you start the conversation, cinema is not included. Then he knows that nothing good is coming out of it, so he will back out. Yeah. But if, it, if you make him understand that, oh, okay, I've been in the cinema before, this is how much I'm made from the cinema, yeah. and this is how much I'm sure I can make, and then the other ones from the online streaming platform, the VODs and things will just be an additional ones, mm -hmm. then they will be convinced and say, oh, okay, it looks like I even make my money from the cinema before moving on to the other platform to make my profit. Yeah. So if that is shut, then why would I even want to invest in film? Because they are not charity organizations, they are businessmen. Still on the cinema story, Nanayao, who is a business manager for Silverbird Cinemas Ghana, is appealing to President Ekufado to open the cinemas so that the over 300 staff are able to feed their families. This is not just about opening the cinemas. Cinemas is just a fraction of what the industry do. We have producers, we have directors, we have costume, we have so many people relying on our business so they can put food on their table. Mr. President, kindly open the cinemas for us so people can have their livelihood back, so we can go back to our lives and be able to feed our family and live well. Thank you very much. And that ends showbiz for today, bringing to an end the bulletin of Joy News Today for the week. My name is Daniel Dads, and many thanks for joining us. See you Monday.